Yo, what up, internet? <laughs> Happy New Year's and shit. Ah, uh, welcome to Bricks and Beer, episode 18. Um, fuck, yeah, man, it's the 18th one. I always fuck up these intros. I always feel like I'm gonna have something clever to say, and then I'm just amazed that I'm recording. Ah, uh, so, fucking cheers. Hopefully your 2015 was good. Mine was pretty decent. It was an alright year. It wasn't stellar, but it was okay. Like, there were good things and bad things. You know, life. Ah, uh, today we are going to drink a special beer. Special shout out to the homie Carl. Um, not a Lego dude, but old school, high school friend of mine. I told that stupid Guinness story, which was wrong. I told it in the wrong order. Um, anyway, this is the Lagunitas The Hairy Eyeball. It's a limited release. Carl gave me another beer, which I was supposed to do on the show, and then I drank it and didn't do the show. Um, so this one, we're going to taste live on the show. It's not from the dudes. I just like these glasses. Oh, interesting. It's pretty good. It's a... I was expecting more of like an IPA kind of deal, but it's, it's a little caramely. It's more... Um, Oh man, that's good. It's really good. It's, it's just a little surprising to me. I wasn't expecting that. Because Lagunitas does a lot of IPAs. That's what I've known them for. Um, the NorCal Lagunitas. Uh, we're going to talk about a shit ton of Lego. So I'm going to talk briefly about this beer. And then we're going to move on. Um, yeah. So I want to read you uh, a kind of a stupid story poem thing. Because I was trying to figure out what this beer is about. And I read this. This doesn't really tell you what the beer is about. But it does, in a way. Uh, let's see. So I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Basically, it's about dude that was hung over. And uh, let's see. His head was full of ragwater, bitters, and blue ruin. His teeth felt like he'd been chewing aluminum. And his breath smelled like a burning tractor tire. There was a retching knot somewhere between his liver and East St. Louis. And he couldn't be sure whether or not he'd wet himself. A yellow sine wave rang in his ears so loud it made his teeth itch, and he was sure that when he touched his skin anywhere, it would induce a rhythmic, retching jag. Even in the face of all of that, he found himself smiling at the realization that today, rep repress represented in the breast of a new year, an undiscovered country, and also that there was still one warm, half-full, flat, redolent, hairy eyeball on the nightstand. Yes, there is a god. Call us sometime. And then it has their fucking phone number. Um, so I was trying to fucking read about the beer, and it had this whole crazy thing about being hungover, and it's New Year's, and um, I guess fucking Happy New Year's. Oh, that's good. Uh, so I started doing the thing with the bass plate. If you guys want to watch the other episodes, you can go do that. Uh, there'll be an annotation here, maybe. Or it could just be... a pinwheel of plates, because this isn't even a fucking base plate. It's just some bullshit. Uh, but yeah, anyway. So, today we're going to talk about January, which means drones. Dronuary. Uh, Dronuary is a Flickr-centric sort of theme month. There's all these a full Lego theme months. Um, November, with the two Vs, was the big one. Kind of still is a big one. I didn't build a Vic Viper this year. Uh, I feel kind of bad about that, but not really. Because um, it would have done a shit job. And, like, you want to do a good Vic Viper. Uh, so there's also uh, Marchy Coma and Mactober and September and all these other stupid theme months. And I, I like them because they cause me to build. But then I also sort of hate seeing the shittiness of everybody building the same thing instead of, like, I'm really inspired. I'm going to build something rad. Here it is. It's like, I'm not inspired, but I want to build something. So here's something that looks like what everybody else is building. Which, sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it's not. So, Dronuary is about drones. Um, small little robots. Uh, robots. And uh, they're kind of the Neil Blumkampf style. That's like the visual style. Uh, I think the Brolog dudes started it in 2013? maybe 2014. I did 14 and 15 the last two years. Um, it might have existed before then, but there's a whole bunch of dudes, Forrest and Henry and Kevin and Carter and 
I don't know, Dane, like all, all these people that do all this shit. There's like a bunch of dudes with like weird numbers in their names, like Bezor One. Uh, and they all started doing drones, and like I kind of jumped on the bandwagon. And uh, my first one, this is uh, from 2014, has a bunch of names. MC Dronealicious, he's a hip hop robot. As you can see, he's got Boombox, the Ghetto Blaster, spray paint, two microphones, two. Uh, he's got my favorite Lego hat, which is gold from the, I think this is from the DJ. I'm not sure who this is from. Um, and a sensor eye and whatnot. And this is sort of vaguely based on the frame that everybody uses, which is the, the clone or the, what the fuck are they? The battle droid, the battle droid torso, and a couple of these like technic flat pieces. So there's T-bar, these two things, and this. And I guess the first one is this way? So the, the head clip's up there, I'm not really sure. Somehow this is upside down. Um, I clearly aped this from another dude who was one of the people that was building drones heavy, which I happen to have one because, shout out to Aaron, he gave me this dude. Um, and this dude's fucking super cool. He was part of the reason why I started wanting to do this was just because like I was seeing shit like this come out. Um, and you can't really see this too well. Oh, that's sort of better. Um, so he's kind of like an angel drone. He's got wings and a super cool helmet and some eyes and shit. Um, and they're all, you know, like mini fig scale-ish. So you got MC Journalicious here, and you got this dude. And Aaron sort of like really kicked off the whole droneuary thing for me. Because I built this one just as, you know, sort of a a gag kind of deal. And Aaron made some comment about you you always have to have a, a roadblock to your whatever duke or something. It was some G.I. Joe thing. I'm not heavy into G.I. Joe by any means, like at all. I really know very little about it. Um, but I do like the whole idea of G.I. Joe and like the theming of it and everything, the whole like mercenary squad. So what I started doing was I wanted to build a squad, and I looked up these tropes. So there's the six-man team trope. So you always have to have, like, there's, you know, as you write a TV show or whatever, um, roles fill in, naturally. So I, ha I had some thought behind building these. So I'll just go through 2014, and I do have the 2015 ones as well. We'll, we'll roll through all of those, and um, we'll kind of see where that takes us. So we got... Dronealicious, as we've talked about. Uh, the next two dudes are Snake Eye and um, a binary number. So this is Snake Eye. He's pretty cool. He looks uh, sort of fully coolie ish He's got a bayonet rifle, which just has some third party. This is a, a Brick Arms clip here. Um, a lot of people were using Brick Arms and more realistic, overly detailed minifig weapons. Which kind of goes with the theme. Um, I'm pretty proud of this dude because he's got a click it for an eye, which is sort of a, an unusual use. And he's got the shoulder pauldron from the clone trooper, which you guys can't see for shit. This episode's going to be a little frustrating for you because I'm just going to talk about all the shit that's out of focus up in the camera. But there are photos of all of this bullshit on the internet, which will be linked below. So you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so he was the first one to use a cape for me. I really like the sort of Akira off the shoulder looking cape. He's got a sword because, you know, he's a ninja because he's Snake Eyes. Like, his name is Snake Eye. And this one, the binary number, um, the binary is Stormy because this is Storm Shadow and he goes with Snake Eyes. But in my universe, they're like buddy robots that hang out on the same team and they have continually competing antics. Um... So he also has a sword on the back, and some guns. These are all purist brick-built guns. Um, but they look good together. That was the whole thing, was like, the drones should photograph well. Because they're, they're such small things that doing the photography is a little bit easier. Um, and the, the two of them are cool. So that's the, the next two in the lineup of uh, the six-man squad. And then uh, I, I kind of wanted just to go, like, the this, this standard G.I. Joe, but, like, put my own twist on it. So I've got, you know, the two killers or whatever and the jokester. 
and then I wanted somebody that was a little weirder. Um, so this dude's called MBK Every Day, which MBK, part of droning and the whole droneuary thing is no meat bags, no uh, flesh, no mini figs. It's got to be pure robot. Um, so he's a meat bag killer, MBK. Um, he's supposed to be a prisoner. That's why he's in orange, and that's why he has a shackle on his neck. Um, the shackle is connected to the controller, which he is holding, which I kind of like that thematic idea. Um, he also has a life vest, or like this traffic vest deal, shrouding the face, which uh, works really well. There's a, there's a sticker on the top to hide the, the clear, so it's just the circle, which I think is a really cool, clean look. Um, and he's got, you know, the caution striping and whatnot. And, and the... The cool thing about the whole Droneuary thing is because it's so small, I feel like you can do two things. You can build quickly, so I can build these, and I can kind of jam one out in a day or a night and, like, get it polished. And then, like, you can do really cool things with the detail. So everything that has to be smaller like this, you sort of have to push more, right? If you're building a two-foot robot, like, the head can have all kinds of shit just, like, superfluously on there, everything here kind of has to have a function in a way. Um, and they're, they're fairly posable. Like, all these little dudes can stand around and act hard. Um, he also has a cape, but it's a, a much smaller cape, and it's orange. It's the, the Sand Trooper pauldron, um, which looks better in real life than it does on this camera. So, the last two are um, Little Grey and... I really like Lil Grey. He's pretty cool. He, this is more sort of like the standard drone format. Like, there's not a lot outside of the the standard frame that's basically this. Um, this is Aaron's. Like, you can sort of see the similarities. Oh, okay. So Aaron's is the right way. Aaron's is right side up. And this is upside down. Uh, you can't see that at all. Um, but see the T-piece? The T-piece is at the top here, and the T-piece is what connects the hips here versus the droid torso. So it's it's cool because the droid torso has um, pins at the top and the bottom, so you can flip the parts either way. Um, so yeah, so all of mine are based off of this. So this is sort of the standard dude. I wanted Lil Grey to sort of be like the, the calm second in command. Yeah, keep it on camera. And um, he's got a gun and a machete and some stuff and a cape and a backpack thing. And he looks all right. But what's really cool about Lil Grey is not Lil Grey. It's Big Blay, his partner of sorts, which is the roadblock of the team. Um, this is Big Blay, who is a giant robot. And uh, he's pretty cool. I like this dude. Um, I've kept him built for two years, so that means something. And uh, what I like most about this dude is that he essentially is a bigger version of this. Um, I tried to actually macro up the parts. So these are the same as those. And you can see this little clip there is there. And that's the rest of the droid body torso. And then the feet actually are macro versions of the clips. And, uh, yeah, there's sort of some, oh, and the arms, the arms are the, the droid arms. Um, so if you look from the profile, you'll see they kind of look like, uh, this one's sideways, that doesn't fucking help me. Yeah, live, uncut, uncut, guys. Uh, okay, so there you go, there's an arm, and there's an arm. Uh, they're supposed to be the same part. Uh, anyway, so Big Blay is, you know, posable, as he is, and he's got big, clampy, fisty clamps, which are great. And he's got little grabby claws. I like my bigger drones to have grabby claws, and you'll see in the year after this, I, uh, I, I sketched away a little bit from the standard Dronuary trope to uh, a new one, and it, it heavily features small grabby claws. Um, he's got a head turns and shit, and um, it kind of looks like a bigger version of, you know, these, seeing a theme. And then uh, he also has some 
external weaponry, which is pretty cool. So he's got a big flip-up cannon and a big flip-up missile rack, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like this piece here. This is like a mast piece for a pirate ship that um, sort of a pain to work with because it, it doesn't work geometry-wise perfectly, but if you float a tile there, you can make it work. Um, so yeah, he's got a big cannon, some missiles, because you know, all robots need missiles, because that's how you do when you're a robot. And um, yeah, that's Big Blay, so little little Gray, Big Blay, see they're, they're buddies, he's the big bruiser. He's kind of a gentle giant though. I imagine on this team that he's the guy who like never wants to hurt anybody, and he's like playing with butterflies and shit, and then like, this dude's like decapitating humans and robots and whatnot, and Big Blay is just hanging out, playing in the flowers. Uh, yeah, so, fuck, that was a lot about drones, and it's still going. Um, hopefully you guys are drinking some good beer, hopefully you, you got some good beer. Take a quick drone intermission for a second, um, refill my beer here. I should mention, uh, shout out to the homie Vlad for hooking me up, as always, with the hot Lego swag. Um, this is his design, the Brick Builder design. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's very 80s. It's got Lego parts galore in it. Um, and I like it. It fits with uh, my homie, MC Journalicious. So there you go. Cheers to you, Vlad. Thanks again. Um... Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about some more drones. Let's just get into 2015. So 2014, um, you know, drones happened. I, I really like this song by Heems. Um, it's, ah, oh, fuck, I forget what it's called. Damn it, I'm really poorly planning for this shit. But there is a line, so this dude, um, the caption that went with him was throwing stones in the zone with my box, which is perfect. So... Google Heems, I don't know, I'll link to a YouTube video down there. There's a song, yeah, uh, it's rad, it's kind of about drones, kind of more political, um, but I like drones and whatnot. So, fast forward, another year rolls through, January of what is now last year, and uh, I built a drone, and I just built one, and I was like, bam, here's this old dude. And uh, you can see he's got little grabby arms, as I... As I told you, I like grabby arms. And he has the greatest printed piece ever. Uh, this is from the General Grievous wheel bike that came out in late 2014. I bought it at Bricon in 2014. Um, it's great. It's a pink one by one round tile with some printing that you can't see. Um, the fucking webcam blows. But there's a photo. You'll see it. Um, he's obviously a little, little hunched over, sort of like bipedal walker dude. And one of the things that happened between this year, 2014, and 2015, was somehow the concept of dronesis just happened. Like, in the group, people people started talking about dronesis, and dronesis lives, and whatnot. And it's very much robotic Jesus. And I like robotic Jesus. He's pretty cool. Uh, so... This dude came out, and um, I titled him, May the Many Electronic Blessings of Dronesis Be With You. And I kind of felt like he was like a cute little dude that would walk up and like tell you like about the scriptures of Dronesis or whatever in the future. And like, yeah, I'm very influenced by all the cyberpunk shit and the Matrix. And um, the Animatrix has like great shit with like the rise of the machines. And I kind of imagine that, like... It would be a weird, like, spiritual thing when they're like, yes, all electronics are electronics. Doesn't make any sense to you. Makes sense to me. Robotic Jesus. So anyway, this dude shows up, and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm really into building drones. I've already done the six-man team. What am I going to do this year? And I'm like, dude, drones this. So I decided to do, um... Dronesis and his 12 apostles, which, you know, because I could. So the next one is uh, Smile Space. Um, this guy is pretty funny. He's got a big, happy face. 
and he's got really, really cool little grabby arms. These are uh, the Bionicle, like, minifig arms that are the robot arms. They're super cool. Um, the, the coolest part about these is that they alternate the clips. So the clips go 90 degrees to each other. So you can get a little bit more grabby claw action. Like, but you can see this one is vertical and these guys are horizontal. So there's a little bit of differentiation just between these two that are next to each other based on how they clip to the, the bars and whatnot. Um, and shout out to Bezor to the one. Um, I, I don't even think you've built anything for a fucking year, homie. What happened? Um, but he's the dude that came up with Smile Space, which is this whole idea that there's, like, really, really shitty anthropomorphic faces, like, painted on these very clearly not human things to make them more, like, appealing and socially interactive. So I kind of imagine this thing, like, walking around, like, a farmer's market, like, stopping and talking to people and shit. Um, or in a lab. Very much a lab, where he's like, they're like, please don't crush the kitten. And he's like, I don't understand. Um, and he's got this super creepy smiley. And dude, so this is an old school piece, right? Which is pretty great. Like, this combo, this printing, it's fucking awesome. Um, yeah, and you'll you'll notice on all of my drones, I kind of heavily sticker and use the, the printed parts to affect... Um, because it makes it feel more industrial, it makes it feel more real, and all of these, all of this year, I did a single photograph for each one, and I felt like that photograph had to be really good and sort of tell a story. So a lot of these had human companions, like this dude had a, a lab tech dude that was like running away screaming. Um, I don't have any of the partners with these, I just saved the drones. So yeah, Smile Space, that's uh, that one. Um, and then when I did this, so I told you we, we talked about getting this part at BrickCon. Um, while I was at BrickCon, the homie Pascal, shout out to you, Paz, built this, which is hilarious, because this is basically a drone in the style of Smile Space, but with a mouse face. So this is a uh, mouse space, and um, it's great. I kind of like this, like, shielded grabby claw, like, the idea that he doesn't want to get whatever is on him. Um, and he's got a cannon arm, you know, because, and, uh, he's pretty cool, and I keep this dude around, because it's like my little Pascal build that I feature with my drones, which is great. Cheers to you, Paz. Alright, moving on, um, next two. So I came off the Smile Space thing, Smile Space kind of went, like, big last year, and, uh, I wanted to sort of tell a story with the Apostles of Drones this, so... The Apostles of Jesus, the maybe or maybe not real zombie, um, he, they all came from different walks of life, right? I think, I think, I don't, I don't really know the Bible. I, I only read the Apocalypse part. Um, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> these two I entitled Bad Binary Bitches. Um, the photograph of these two is rad. And this is very much where, like, the stickering comes into effect. So she's got the old school face, but I put the, the new school stickering on it, um, which gives it really, like, a nice cyberpunk feel. And she's got uh, these really cool arms, yet again using that, that bionicle minifig robot arm with some canisters up top and the, the grabby claws in the bottom. Um, and she has a shitty leg, because... I envision these. Let's just put this out there. These are robo hoes. These are whores. They work on the street. They work on the corner. They're trying to give you whatever robot whores do. I don't know. Um, I kind of imagine that this one would be like a uh, sort of an escaped lab technician who just lived on the street hardcore. And this one was like voluntary. Like this one's upper class and this one's lower class. Uh, yet like side of the monitor, tattoo face. I'm not sure who made this sticker. This is from um, Space Police 3, I want to say. But whosever signature this is, this is fucking rad. Like, you did a good job. And now it's like the Mike Tyson tattoo of this one, which is great. So bad binary bitches. Um, yeah, those two. Uh, that brings us to the next one, which I like this one. Uh, I called this one Traumatic. 
This one's a nurse or a uh, medical drone, if you will. It's got tracks instead of the bipedal legs. Um, really, really awesome stickering kind of deal, courtesy of, I want to say this is actually from Benny's spaceship, this like big thermometer looking fucker right there. And uh, this also has a really cool part usage, which I'll just show you. So the head has this cool mouth, right? Sculpted mouth. What this is, this is the OG neck bracket rocket pack thing from Classic Space. Uh, it's got a piece of flex tubing encapsulated in a clear one by one round tile, which gives it a nice effect. And then when you turn it upside down and you jam it on here, it gives it a mouth. And um, it's cool. I like this. This is sort of like, I feel like this is pretty cool. So it's got six arms. It's got some, you know, syringes and whatnot. This is a really nice evolution in my mind of this. Because it's like, it's the same, but it, it takes it in a totally different direction. And it, I feel like logically these could be connected, right? Like, I'm, I'm building this entire drone uprising story in my head, clearly. And, um... I, I imagine, like, at the point where, like, the drones are in full effect, like, they would have had to have infiltrated in every aspect of our society. And I also just wanted to build fucking Robot Jesus and his disciples. So that's the, the healer, the nurse one. Um, then I got a, uh, like, a construction one, but I wanted it to be a little different. So this one, I called this one switching to the hardline. Because he had a controller that was plugged into the back that uh, the construction worker, he was like clearly like not responding to the commands. Just, you know, laying pipe wherever the fuck he wants to lay pipe. He's got uh, three eyes, which is cool. You know, you can scan around and whatnot. And this, this tile is uh, legitimately like one of my childhood, I probably not on this tile. Um, it's dirty as shit and beat up. Which is perfect for, you know, a dude that works in the sewers or whatever this dude does. Uh, striping, Rock Raiders, printed piece, great. Yeah, so there's that dude. He's pretty cool. What's up next? Oh, this is, this is a good one, so we'll mix this up. So, um, like the previous team, I wanted to have a big dude. So, I built a dude that's not quite as big. Here's a uh, big blade. Here's Big Red, so not not quite as big, but significantly bigger than all of his teammates. Um, Fire Rescue Dude, he's got uh, the cool Chima printed one by one round tiles there, the flame eyes, which I thought was cool. I kind of imagine that's like the uh, the fire being reflected off of his optics. Cool grabby claw deal over here, woo, clawed up, dude. Yeah, I don't know. And um, he, he has some fancy non-pro parts. So again, I'm using those super cool Bionicle clip pieces here. But then I've got uh, the SpongeBob. I guess these aren't non-pro. Maybe these aren't non-pro. The SpongeBob ray guns for his little teeny grabby claws. Because all drones need teeny grabby claws. So you got like big grabby claw, medium grabby claw. This is the OG claw, which is good. And uh, he's got, you know, the, the foam retardant system here where you can spray all this shit out. And uh, that sticker's coming off because it's like a year old. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it with this dude. Oh, he does have a non-pro piece. I knew it was in here. So that is the camcorder space gun in all red. Shout out to the homie Pete. That's where I got that from. Um, Pete has awesome parts. I was going to bring out a magazine for Big Blay, because the homie Big Blay over here was in Brick's magazine, and I fucked up, and it's in the other room, and I'm not going to go get it. So, surprise. Anyway, Big Red, fire dude. Um, you know, the rescue one. He's got, he's got a spotlight. He can come up. It's cool. It's articulated. And, uh, yeah, he fights fires and shit for droneses. And, uh, man, there's so many of these. All right, so the next one. Uh, this is the multi-screen messenger. This is like the homeless dude with the cardboard sign on the corner trying to tell you about Jesus. 
He's a little better dressed. Um, he does have this printed part, which is so rad. This is so old, too. Um, it's one by three, which is a very weird, rare part. And I kind of, it gives him a really nice face. Like, I imagine this dude being annoying as shit. Um, and he's got all of his printed hologram deals up here full of stickers. And I imagine each one of these screens is just saying the same thing over and over again. And uh, it, so I posted this, and I posted one without the holographic screens. He's got cool treads. It's a tire stretched over a thing. Um, but he does have, like, little followers. So I have a bunch of these, which can go with him. Um, yeah. So I, I got uh, all of these monitors, I think, in a draft. I don't think I lug bulk these. I think I won the draft. So there you go. There's like his minions, and there's him, and he's yelling at you about drones. This multi screen messenger. That's uh, getting near the end. Getting near the end. Um, next one up is a, is a very funny one. I like this one a lot. Uh, he's actually one of my favorites of the bunch. This is the chef drone. He's a cook. He's angry. He's Italian. He has a chef hat. He's making a pizza, he's making a sauce over here, he's chopping up humans, you know. Um, he does the same trick with the mouth and the whole neck bracket deal. Um, he pulls it off a little better, I think, because he's got a more anthropomorphic eye. Man, you guys can't see shit on this. And uh, he also has this cool um, Galaxy Squad don't think it's Galaxy Squad. This It came in Galaxy Squad, but I think this is the collectible minifig robot armor. Um, but it works really well with the orange and whatnot and the stickers. And the stickers are great. Some of these are from Benny's Spaceship. So, like, this little digital readout on the wrist, I really, really like. It feels very real and functional to me. Chefs. Man, for those of you who were like, Andrew, I miss it when you do long ones happening dude we're we're past the 30 minute mark um i might disappear and get another beer out of the fridge if we keep going we'll see oh we're almost there we're almost there all right a couple more to go next one up on the the apostles of drones this the war drone this dude he's a battle drone you know i imagine this is kind of this is the deal like See, grabby claws, but industrial grabby claws. This is the OG grabby claws, too. Like, I, I feel pretty proud that I could bust this out and be like, fuck yeah, OG grabby claws. Um, he's got a cool machine gun mount. This trick, this uh, two pans into the camera deal. Man, you guys can't see that for shit. Uh, maybe you can see that. That's a Soren move. This geometry works, like, perfectly. Um, yeah. And then he's also got ski feet. So these are the, the skis that came in the Arctic sets. Told you guys these are rad. So he's got big ski feet. So they, they feel appropriate. Um, dirty stickers, you know, because debris and war and shit. Uh, he also has a mouth, kind of. So I imagine him being like, fuck you, meatbag. Pew, pew. Yeah. You know. I, if you guys are still with me, that's great. If you, if you haven't turned this off yet, I'm amazed. Uh, okay, so we only have three more. It's not going to take that long. Um, the next one is the cop, the popo. This is, uh, I think I named it ISD5974. He's got like a, a taser, because he's a cop, security drone. I like the coloring on this one a lot. He he features the silver, the flat silver, which is one of my favorite Lego colors. Uh, good printing on the parts. This is the minifig armor, which I think works really, really well with the, the cut flex tube. Gives it just a, a subtle black outline there, which works pretty well. Um, so yeah, you know, cop. Next one, the Air One. This one's pretty cool. Um, 
So, you know, it's like at this point, I'm, I'm clearly going off the reservation of following this a little bit. Like this is sort of that, but this is, it improved. And then every single one of these, I'm like pushing the, the boundaries a little bit, I guess. I mean, it's not, there's no boundaries. It's just, I'm deviating more. So this one's the air one. Um, he's got four arms, which these are the General Grievous arms from this set. Well, the set that comes with the eyeball. And he's got uh, wings, so he can fly around. He can do do this, which I guess is his uh, flying mode. You know, he can put the arms up, or you can totally put the arms down, which is pretty cool. And then you can fold the wings down, so that can be. I imagine like this is like he's like hovering three feet off the ground, talking to other drones and shit, and then he, you know, whoop. whoop pieces out. And then the last one. Fuck, that took a long time. Dronesis. Dronesis himself. And this is just a regular drone. Because, you know, Dronesis. Supposed to be a regular dude. Uh, he's got cool holographic printed tiles and a face. And that's it. Um, he's very mechanical. I used the lightsabers on him. So I guess he deviates a little bit in that he looks more, uh, Baron, more more skeletal than say you know one of these dudes who looks a little bit more bulky um so fuck yeah man that's two years of drones we just fucking talked about and that's a lot and i'm kind of exhausted by that which is weird so what are we gonna talk about now guys i don't know i don't know let's take a break from the drones because that was a shit ton of drones i'm gonna drink beer. You guys hopefully are drinking still. Now might be a, a good time to go like get another beer out of the fridge. So if you get that beer out of the fridge and you're like, shit, I live in a cave. I don't have a fucking opener. What are you going to do? You're not going to buy this fucking book off of Amazon. It's cheap. It's cheap thrills. You could buy this off of Amazon. You could give this to your in-laws. You could be like, dude, I know a bunch of dudes. Here's a fucking great thing. What is this book called? It's called 99 Ways to Open a Beer Bottle Without a Bottle Opener. I know people. They are Germans. They open beers with other beers. They just don't give a fuck. They're like, I'm in the apocalypse. Give me a beer, I'm good. I'm not that person. So, in this book... There is 100 ways. Now I'm going to spoil this because I bought a shit ton of these. If you guys want to buy this book, great, go buy it. If you don't, and you're like, Andrew, why are you shitting on this book? Here's why. Number one, number two, edge of table, disposable lighter. Edge of table, two beer bottle difficulty. This says, place cap on edge of table, just punch the shit out of it, drink the rewards. Step two, number two. Disposable lighter. Three beer balls. This is the one that everybody I know can do. I can. It takes a while. It's painful. It's embarrassing to watch. This has six steps. Hold bottle securely. Place bottom of lighter under cap. Place thumb on top of cap. Step four. Pry off cap. Step five. Drink. Step six, you are a professional. Now, here's where I have an issue with this, right? So, like, I understand it in theory, but there's no actual thing about, like, here's how to use leverage, here's the optimal position, here is a diagram. Instead, I just get a picture of, like, a hipster douchebag with a belt buckle and some wrist tattoos opening a beer with a lighter that I can barely see. Now, that... I, you know what this is like? This is like those origami books you get, and it's like, step three, fold the paper in half. Step four, here's a falcon. And you're like, what? What? Okay. Lighter. Everybody knows this one. This is pretty common, right? It's a hard trick to learn. You can. 
You just have to figure out the leverage and where to position your hand and all that shit and like, whatever. Method number 46. Motherfucking Chewbacca. Now, I own this Chewbacca, this Power of the Force 2000 and 1998 figure or whatever the fuck this is. Here are the steps for Chewbacca. Number one. Appreciate that your loyal first mate is always by your side to protect and help you in any situation. No spoilers. Step two. Place Chewie's head under bottle cap. There is a photo for your reference. Step three. This is the magical origami step. Pry off cap. Step four, drink. Step five, share with your dead best friend. I have two issues with this. One, this is not going to work. I am never going to open a beer on Chewie's head. It's just not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the action figure, and I'm, gonna, I'm still going to have an unopened beer. Number two, don't fuck up. Chewbacca, yo, this is a perfectly good action figure. This photo makes me cringe. And I don't want to be like the dudes in that SNL Star Wars action figure commercial where they're like, don't touch it. Don't fucking molest your action figure failing to open a beer bottle. If you grab my Chewbacca action figure and you fucking pop open a beer and you gouge the shit out of the plastic, at least I'm like, you open the beer. But if, if, if it's just this, and I'm just failing, and I'm marring Chewbacca, what, what the fuck did he do to you, man? Fuck that book. Anyway, let's get back to Lego and drones and beer. So, um, yeah, it's 2016, right, guys? I'm not going to upload this today, so it's definitely 2016 for you. Surprise. I'm in the past. This is a message from the past to the future. It's uh, New Year's Eve here, so I built something today because I'm on vacation. And I want to hang out with you guys. And this is the whole reveal, right? This is like what you wait for where I talk about the Lego and it's not the bullshit like two years Lego. Happy January, everybody. This is the first one. I'm not really sure what the, the theme this year is. This is the first one. He's uh, he's pretty cool. I'm going to take some photos. They may or may not be linked below. I haven't yet. That Bionicle minifig arm I keep harping on about. I got a fuck ton of them. So there's a shit ton in this one. Uh, he's got grabby arms. He's got really cool fucking greebly feet. Which, there you go. You can see there, there's some in there. They're extra greebly. He's got a, a cool little like vent deal in the back. Using them as well. And um, yeah, he's a drone. He does have one of my new favorite printed pieces, which I feel a little remiss. I told you about um, whatever Ninjago's dude's boulder blaster plane with the shooty part. That has this, which this is rad. This is a 1x2 cheese slope that's entirely printed that you may or may not be able to see. There you go. Yeah. Coming to you live from your drone, dude. Anyway, it's the first new build of the year, technically. Um, there'll probably be more stickers on this when you see the photos. But you got to see it first. And, uh, yeah. So, 2016, it's going to be a good one. Um, I did get some new Lego, you know, it's the holidays, some people, meaning me, bought me some Lego, uh, it's this, yeah, this is awesome, this is so awesome, uh, this is awesome for a bunch of reasons, uh, this is Nexo Knights, this is this beautiful two-page spread that doesn't have any set numbers on it, there's no real, like, selling shit. It's just, here's the universe. Here's this world. You want to be part of it? It's fucking castle in space? Fuck yeah, you do. Um, so that came from this set. This is, a uh, 
Nice. Shooting parts out. This is basically the thunder tank of the Nexo Knights. It has this, which is fucking so cool. There's so many good parts in here. I, I don't even really like want to bore you guys and go into like, look at all the new parts. There's the new robots. This will be perfect for Dronuary. This new little Travis brick full of goodness. Um, fucking like punk rock pyramid slopes in there. You see that? That's pretty awesome. Um, I bought some of the cool, like, Ultra ones. The shields are great. Like, all these parts are great. The fucking, all the armor is awesome. Um, this one does, however, have this, like, crazy crossbow thing. Which you can click. And pow! That part's gone forever. And what that part is, is a game changer. It's this. It's a mini ball with a bar. And it's super simplistic, and it's super rad, and so far it's only available in like these ridiculous trans colors, but I'm okay with that. Like, that's a game changer, and it's going to be available in every color, so there you go. Um, the shields are cool. I did buy uh, this other super evil one, Ultimate Laveria, who features a piece I've never seen before, but apparently all of you uh, superheroes dudes have seen this. So there's an, a neck bracket that's clear that has two studs, and that is beautiful. Um, the evil shield is rad. The, the best part of this evil set is this is my, so far, of the year, the zero days of the year, favorite printed part of all time. Look how fucking awesome that is. It's like an evil skull on a shield. I love this trans green color. Um, so yeah. Fucking go buy some Nexo Knights, dude. All the shit's good deals, too. It's like, I don't feel like they're fucking you over for parts per price or anything. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Uh, Bricks LA is coming up super soon. If you're watching this first of the year, it's like a week away. Get your shit together. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be the space theme coordinator. Bring some space. The homie Jimmy's showing up. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Fucking peace out, guys. Thanks again for watching. I'm amazed any of you people actually watch this shit or put up with me. So, hopefully 2016 brings you uh, many electronic blessings of Joneses and um, lots of Lego. Get some Nexo Knights. Peace.